Dr. Jamie Pendleton with my husband, Dr. John Pendleton, and we are here with our Siberian Husky, Lexi. <laughs> we're experiencing some pretty bad weather this week, and we're expecting our daughter to come down. She's got a flat tire, so we hope that everybody prays for her that she gets here safely. Hi, Lexi. Can you say hello? Can you say hello? Shake. Say hello. Pray. Pray. You want to pray with us? Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day and we want to bless us and nourish us and keep us for Christ's sake and help that we teach others unto you as you would um, have us teach them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if you want to open your Bible to Genesis chapter 25, we're going to go ahead and get started. We are halfway through Genesis. Now, um, bear with us here because we're going to give you the names and, and basically the best way that we can come up with through our studies on how to say the names in chapter 25. And I know this can be somewhat boring for some people, but it's actually very important that you learn these names and figure out this line that they're talking about. Now, this, you know, when they say this, the 12 tribes in this chapter, they are not talking about the 12 tribes of Israel or of the line of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. We're talking about a different 12 tribes, but that is in here. So don't let, you know ahead of time don't confuse yourself as I did when I first got into the Bible I got a little confused so <laughs> that's why we're taking this uh, one you know one day at a time just for this purpose so um, let me turn this so that I don't confuse myself either I've got my notes here as well okay so Genesis chapter 25 that's a high five we made it halfway yeah <laughs> okay and this is about the death of Abraham. Now, I'm on a new Bible, so bear with me here. Abraham had taken another wife. Remember, Sarai had passed away, and he had to barter for land in another land. He was basically an alien or a foreigner in another land, and he had to barter for his wife's grave, Sarah's grave. You know, remember, she was barren through most of the Bible here. Through most of Genesis, she's been barren. She finally had a son, Isaac, after uh, Abraham gave birth with his... Um, concubine or their servant slave uh, so we've got Hagar in the picture now Hagar's back out of the picture she has Ishmael and then God does keep his promise even though Sarah kind of laughed about it he changed her name from Sarah to Sarah they kind of laughed about she laughed about it like I'm not gonna have a baby now you know God's crazy but he laughed so they named it God said they named their baby Isaac now Isaac and Ishmael both have a line of children now from one from Hagar and one from Sarah and this is basically about Abraham's death and the line of the children and their children. So bear with us here as we teach you how to say the names. Abraham had taken another wife whose name was Keturah. She bore him Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Now Jokshan was the father of Sheba and Dedan. The descendants of Dedan were the Asherites. And the, you want to say it? Luchashites. The Luchashites and the Laamites. The son of Median were um, Apha, Epher, um, Hanok. Remember, usually when you see H-A together, it sounds like the, the long A, hay, like, like the barn hay. So, Hanok, Abida, just like I abide by the law, Abida, and it's Aldea. Um, all these were descendants of Keturah. Now that, that's from the line of Isaac. Abraham left everything he owned to Isaac. But while he was still living, and he lived to be 175 years old, ripe old age, he gave gifts to the sons of his concubines. Because after Sarah, he had concubines now as well as a second wife. He was allowed to do that. In their times, they would have been allowed to do that because um, Sarah was barren for so long, he would have been allowed to have many sons now that she has passed. And he loved Sarah very much. So he had sons of his concubines and sent them away from his son Isaac to the land of the east. Now he would have sent them away because there would have been some strife and he would have had to have protected Isaac. He was the one to truly inherit the family, the family inheritance of the promise of God or the promise of the land, the, the, the cattle, the slaves. He... You know, there would have been some upsets there. Mm -hmm. And he didn't want any problems for Isaac. And I'm sure God let him, let him to do what was right. So in Genesis 25, 5, Abraham left everything he owned to Isaac. 
But while he was still living, he gave gifts to the sons of his concubines and sent them away from his son Isaac to the land of the east. Abraham lived 175 years. Then Abraham breathed his last, his last breath and died at a good old age. And he was one of the last people that would ever live to be beyond the 120 years. An old man and full of years, and he was gathered to his people. His sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah near Mamre, in the field of Ephron, son of Zohar the Hittite. The field Abraham had bought from the Hittites, which is where he had bought it for Sarah. There Abraham was buried with his wife Sarah. After Abraham's death, God blessed his son Isaac, the son from Sarah, who lived near Beer Leharoi. Ishmael's sons. So in Genesis 25, 12, this is the account of the family line of Abraham's son, Ishmael. Now this is the son from the, the slave girl, the, uh, uh, Hagar, that Sarah had her husband sleep with to try to give her a son. And remember they had the, the well where she met God. You know, the, the, mm -hmm. the famous well where she met God there. So now this son, this line, which is from the, the slave girl, is Ishmael. Now this is the account of the family line of Abraham's son, Ishmael, whom was Sarah's slave, Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she bore to Abraham. Now these are the names of the sons of Ishmael, listed in order of their birth. There was Naaboth, the firstborn of Ishmael. There's Kedar. There's Abiel, or Adbiel. There is uh, Mipsam, Mishma, uh, Dumail, and Masa, or Mesa. Adad, and Tima, and Jatur, and um, uh, Nafish, and Kedema. Uh, Remember Kedema. These were the sons of Ishmael, and these are the names of the twelve tribal rulers according to their settlements and camps. Ishmael lived 137 years. 137 years. Okay. He breathed, he breathed his, last, uh, his last breath and died, and he was gathered to his people. His descendants settled in the area of Havilah, to Shur, which was a pretty big area, near the eastern border of Egypt, as you go towards Ashur, and they still have the Dashir um, and the Ashur uh, pyramids there. So that kind of gives you an idea that still exists today. And they lived in hostility towards all the tribes related to them. So this is about Jacob and Esau. This is the account of the family line of Abraham's son, Isaac. Abraham became the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah. And remember, Rebekah was the one that watered the camels in our last lesson. Mm -hmm. Remember, she came in, and he goes, I'm going to find the first girl that comes to the water well. Well, I like Rebekah, because, but it ended up, Rebekah ended up being barren for a while as well. And she was the daughter of Bethel from Aramon, from Padium Aram, and sister of Laban, and Aramim. Now Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was childless. The Lord answered his prayer and his wife Rebekah became pregnant. See, the Lord does answer these prayers if you just pray. The babies jostled each other uh, you know, uh, within her. And she said, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. She went to pray about why her stomach was jostling about and moving. You know, unlike other women she had known was pregnant or had seen give birth. It was really, her tummy was getting big and acting really weird. My mother had, had twins, so <laughs> I'm sure she can relate. And the Lord said to Rebecca, he said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. The first to come out was red, and his whole body was like a hairy garment. He was a very fuzzy little kid, wasn't he? So they named him Esau. After this, his brother came out. 
with his hand grasping Esau's heel. So he was named Jacob. Anyone tell me what that means? Esau's hairy and uh, Jacob is uh, supplanter or thief. Supplanter. Yeah. Supplanter. He's a thief. <laughs> he, he came out by the heel of the other foot. But remember now, the older one would serve the younger one. Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah gave birth to them. So, she went quite a few years, but she had her babies. Mm -hmm. The boys grew up and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was content to stay at home among the tents. He was a mommy's boy. <laughs> Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. She liked the meek and mild one. I'm sure they probably picked on him a lot. And then, you know, sometimes, you know how it is. Sometimes parents will pick a little favorite. Not that they really love anyone more than the other, but they kind of have one they feel a little more sorry for, or maybe one that wants to stay a little closer to home, a little less independent than the other one. You know, I've got three kids, so I can, I know this experience. <laughs> so in uh, Genesis uh, 25, 29, we read, once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country famished. He said to Jacob, Quick, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. That is why he was also called Edom. So Jacob replied, First sell me your birthright. Now let's explain first of all what a birthright is real quick so you don't get confused. The birthright is, is he was wanting Esau, who was the oldest twin to come out, he was wanting his birthright of, of, of Isaac to get all of his belongings, his inheritance and stuff. Now, were they teasing or were they serious? I think uh, Jacob was serious. Yeah, they were serious. And um, Esau didn't have any regard for his birthright. Yeah, he didn't have any regard for it, and Jacob wanted it. He wanted what Isaac was going to give the oldest brother, the oldest twin. Look, I'm about to die, Esau said. What good is a birthright to me? In other words, I'm famished. I'm going to die here waiting for food. <laughs> you know, I'm sure they know they, they joke. But Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Basically, giving his birthright to him. Like, I don't care about my birthright. Just feed me. You know, they thought they were jesting. But many a truth is said in a jest, isn't it? So then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and he drank, and then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. Well, let's let's stop there before we go into Genesis 26, and let's talk about um, let's talk about the birthright a little further. Um, you know, a lot of people will a lot of people want what their parents have, and they're very pushy on their inheritance. But you got a set of twins here, and you can tell they're opposites in personality. One's a little jealous of the other one. One missed being born. You know, he's hanging onto his hill, coming out. He thinks yeah. he deserves something. <laughs> and back then, they probably fought over land and stuff. They were a little jealous over each other. They were playing a little favorites with mommy there. You're a mommy's boy, and the other one was like the big hunter, and the other one kind of hung around mommy a little more. Mm -hmm. You know, did little favors and tried to get any good, but it didn't do him any good because the the birthrights were still going to Esau, and Esau didn't even want it. He didn't want the responsibility. He just wanted to go out and hunt and and be in the fields and plow and do his thing. He didn't really want the birthright. Well, Jacob wanted it. As we go through the story, um, Jacob didn't receive the birthright this way. Mm -hmm. So whatever he was to get, he didn't get it uh, in, in this manner. No. So when we think we're unjust or we do unjust things, God has His plan in all things. Yes. What do you need today? You know, go before what? God and ask Him for things. Yes, and so I want to go over this one more time on how to say this name. Someone writes in and says, how do you say the name? It's called Bir Lahairoi. Bir Lahairoi. That's how you pronounce that. So, um, any other questions? Okay, why sell a birthright to another? Okay, I think he just, he just explained that one. And so... Um, was Jacob a schemer? Yes, J Jacob was definitely a schemer type personality. <laughs> yeah, and he learned some lessons along the way. And we're going to get to that in the next one, so let's not jump ahead of ourselves because <laughs> we got some good stories coming up. Now, I would like to end uh, Genesis 25 with, um, you know, for those who are, who are following along with us who have had questions about Christ and about following God and about how to do that. You know, basically, you just say the prayer that you take Christ into your heart and that you love God and you love His Son and that you believe that His Son 
uh, died on the cross for our sins, and that he was risen again, and that he lives today for, for us, and he carries the stripes from the cross for us, our burdens, and that you will, are willing to take your cross up and follow him, which means you may even be condemned as well, and probably will be in some form or fashion, but it's worth it. The end is worth it. Mm-hmm. We, we find it very worth it. Mm-hmm. So it says here in John 2, this is the one I wanted to read, John 2, 18. Dear children, this is the last hour. Okay, when this was wrote, they were saying this was the last hour. In other words, this is the last of grace. We're living in the times of grace. This is it. We're not getting any other chances. You get to live this life, and you have the free will to make a choice. John and I can only tell you that Christ is knocking. Only you can answer that door. And we hope that you make the decision to to honor that door and, and Christ is knocking. Go to the door, answer it, and become saved. Go out, tell others, get baptized, tell others what Christ has done for you, and watch Christ get it a hold of your life and change you, change you towards a peaceful, humble person who has who can learn to tolerate the type of things the world's going to hand out to you. Because remember, be of God, not of the world. And you're going to find your life change, just as we have seen ours change over the years. It's, it's mm-hmm. been a good life, wouldn't you say? Yep. Good life, good children, and people want to know why we're so happy. I've actually had people walk up to me and say, what is that pill you're taking that you're always so happy? Um, Jesus pill. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Jesus pill. But is it a sin to be happy? That's what God, that's what God wants us to be as happy. We lost a grandchild recently. And then the first thing somebody said to me was, oh, that must have been the devil did that. The devil didn't do that. Bad things happen to good people. Nature happens. Storms happen. Tornadoes happen. You know, you can't say, well, I don't believe in God because somebody I know died in a tornado or my dad died of cancer. If God was real. No, God saves them and brings them up to heaven. He may not save you from the pain and suffering, but he will bring you up to heaven. That's the promise. Through his son, that is the promise. And will he save you here? He might. He might He might heal you of your cancer. If he has a purpose for you and he thinks you're going to go out and you're going to use that leg that you had cancer to show others, whatever purpose he has of you, the whole idea is for you to stay in Christ and, um, and, to, and to be a believer and to teach others how to believe and how to live properly. Mm-hmm. Remember, be, remember, you learn more by setting an example than you do just beating someone down with this. Be an example to others. And that's our message today. Do good things for Jesus. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you very much for this day. Thank you for opening the door that we can share uh, in the life of, of your people and uh, help us as we have various and sundry needs. Guide and direct us. Uh, keep us in, within your path. And give us the things we need, Father. And uh, help us in what we do to serve you. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And we want to thank you for joining us, and we'll be back in a few minutes with Maranatha Minutes with Genesis chapter 26. So be sure and stay tuned and join us.